So it's a pleasure to uh, to introduce Omid Makmali, who's going to uh, start a new lecture series for us uh, today, and he'll be speaking about the Frobenius theorem and Cartan geometries. Yep. Thank you very much. So um, this is sort of the I think the two <coughs> terms are quite familiar um, for everyone in this seminar, but uh, I'm going to make sure that. Uh, we know what uh, at least for Venus integrability is. Um, so this is the outline of the lectures. In the first lecture, we're going to talk about something that is pretty much well known. Mm, so the appearance of Venus integrability in conformal structures in dimension four and three. Um, I'm not sure if we'll make it until um, dimension three because I want it to be at least uh, <coughs> everything will want to be clear in dimension four, but we will talk about it if necessary next lecture. The second lecture would be, again, the appearance of this uh, Frobenius integrability in two, three, five geometries that we've seen quite a bit um, in a couple of lectures. And then we'll give examples of two, three, five with this uh, kind of property using a scalar fourth order ODE. And then this construction will um, immediately into the general construction that we'll talk about in the third lecture. All right, so let's start with some basic definitions and uh, 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 main theorem, but Frobenius theorem. Um, so we start with the uh, 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 a subring in the uh, ring of exterior differential form on a manifold. And um, this subring is called an ideal or algebraic ideal if it is closed under the wedge product. So if you have a form, and we're going to exclude also um, zero degree forms, which are a function. So if we have like a K form, then that means the wedge of that K form with any other form also belongs to the, uh, to, to I, to our ideal. So this is called an algebraic ideal. Um, I is called a differential ideal or an exterior differential system. If um, uh, not only it's an algebraic ideal, it's also a differential ideal, meaning that if it's closed under exterior derivative. So um, for example, if um, we have an algebraic ideal uh, you know, with some generators S, then its differential ideal is the, al the algebraic ideal generated by S and the, the derivative of S, the exterior derivative. And then if we have a, uh, you know, a, uh, an ideal, then we can ask for uh, its integral manifold, which is a sub-manifold given by F uh, into our manifold M such that the pullback of the ideal to S is zero. So these are the integral leaves of the integral manifold of the ideal. For example, I think we've seen this example before in Dennis's lecture. Uh, we're given a second order ODE and in the first jet space or the space of variables X, Y, Y prime, the solutions of this ODE are the solute integral curves of this ideal generated by these two one forms. And uh, basically the curves are given as the integral curves of this vector field. Okay, now a Fafian system that we'll see uh, in this lecture is a differential ideal generated by finitely many one forms. And the notation we're going to use is mod i or modulo i, which means that we're taking congruence with respect using the ideal i. So for example, if we say we have an ideal and we take d of it, if, if it's congruent to zero, modulo i means that i is a differential ideal. Basically, by taking the derivative, you add one adds nothing to the algebraic ideal i. Um, now, Knowing all this is enough to state the Frobenius theorem. So given a Fafian system I on an n-dimensional manifold, such that I is Frobenius or completely integrable, meaning that 
you can write the ideal, the Fafian system, as an algebraic ideal generated by these n minus k one forms. So algebraically, uh, taking the ideal of this is the same as uh, it gives the Fafian system i for some constant k in a neighborhood of, of a point on our manifold. So given this a Frobenius uh, uh, Fafian system, com completely integrable system, there is a local coordinate around P such that the ideal is generated by, a, by complete differentials for some coordinate system x1 to xn around the point P. In this case, the integral manifolds of I are k-dimensional and they're given by uh, <coughs> uh, uh, constant, uh, by uh, level sets of x k plus one up to x n. Okay, now um, we're going to delve in uh, immediately to uh, uh, four-dimensional conformal geometry. This was uh, we we're going to use this notation uh, later on. So a conformal geometry of uh, indefinite signature is given by a um, metric of signature two two. Um, and uh, these uh, structures, we can solve the equivalence problem for them uh, using by associating a Cartan geometry, uh, which is basically, as we've seen uh, in also Dennis's talk, a principal <coughs> a P1 bundle. So it's a Cartan geometry of type SO33 and P1, where P1 is the first parabolic in SO33. And G, this is a P1 principal bundle over our manifold, four dimensional manifold, equipped with a Cartan connection. So P1, the first parabolic is stabilizer of an O line in uh, R6. And this principal bundle can be viewed as prolongation of the SO22, uh, CO22 bundle of frames, co frames on N. And uh, the Cartan connection psi is, uh, takes value in the Lie algebra of SO33. And uh, it satisfies the covariance conditions that I'm not gonna uh, recall. It can be written in this way. So um, just to uh, remind each other, this part uh, involving omegas, they are uh, semi-basic uh, uh, with respect to the fibration G to M or horizontal. So this is sometimes denoted as the uh, minus one part of the, the algebra G, SO33. This is the positive uh, part of the, the algebra and this part plus this are the, um, uh, sorry, here are called the, um, are the G zero part of the, um, uh, <coughs> uh, SO33. So there's a one gradient for these geometries. And uh, this takes value in the Lie algebra of SO33 with respect to this inner product on R6. And uh, one can see that um, this uh, bilinear form, the conformal class of it on the principal bundle G is well defined. And taking any section from the manifold to um, our principal bundle, the pullback of this bilinear form belongs to the conformal class of our metric G. Moreover, these omega i's are usually referred to as lifted coframes, meaning that if you take a point in the principal bundle and denote u0, denote by u0, uh, you know, if h is the uh, g0 part of u, taking value in SO, CO22, then these lifted coframes, given a trivialization of the principal bundle can be uh, written as pullback of some, uh, this, uh, some preferred choice of coframe on M pulled back to principal bundle and then multiplied by the inverse of H. Okay, now having a Cartan connection, one can form its um, curvature to form. Um, in, um, defined this way. And in the case of conformal structures, it can be written this way. And uh, here, these are zero, these correspond to G minus one. Uh, there's a, a zero graded piece and a, 
plus one graded piece and uh, um, the two forms that correspond to theta and one gamma one and this part, they are called the, for us, it'll be the anti-self dual part of the viral curvature that the it has five entries I denote by A1 um, to A4. And um, there's the self dual part that with uh, five entries, uh, I denote by B0 to B4. And um, this is called the cotton yort tensor. It's not really a tensor, but it doesn't transfer like a trans, a transformation law is not like a tensor in dimension four, but um, they're uh, expressed in terms of CIJK with these symmetric properties in dimension four, there are 16 components of them. Okay, um, so, for um, to sort of investigate interchangeability, we um, would like to first find some distinguished set of you know uh, <coughs> uh, subspaces on our manifold. In in this case, in particular, we want some distinguished two plates. And uh, what will do the job for us is the a set of null two planes uh, where. The metric when restricted to these planes is degenerate. So this is the definition of a null two plane for an indefinite conformal structure. So if our metric is of this form, that means if you want to degenerate, then this relation has to hold on this two plane. And um, um, we know basically, if one thinks about it, uh, the null cone of G uh, of an indefinite uh, conformal structure is the indefinite quadric which when we projectivize it gives in an affine chart gives the well-known hyperboloid and it has two rulings it's doubly, doubly ruled but more explicitly we can get, um, parametrize this double ruling by what's known as alpha planes in this case it will be anti-self dual we don't need the notion of hodge star or anti-self duality i'm just saying if, if, in case someone wants to check alpha planes they're defined by um this relation between uh, one form, so this ratio is equal to this ratio, equal to some number we denote by alpha, which takes value in R, and because these are uh, projective, so alpha can also take value at infinity. That means alpha planes can be written as basically kernel of a rank two Fafian system like this, uh, where again alpha. It's an affine coordinate for P1 bundle of uh, these alpha planes at each tangent space. The other set is called beta planes and um, um, they are parametrized this way. And the beta, beta planes are null planes that can be written as the kernel of uh, such <coughs> set of two forms for some beta instead of one form. Now, this is on M, but what's, what we're gonna use later on is uh, viewing this on the principal bundle G and viewing these planes as actually um, uh, um, co-rank two, co two hyper planes on the principal on this 15 dimensional principal bundle G. So we define this set of, uh, again, uh, <clears throat> uh, ideals. And uh, we'll see that it's easy to check that um, if for, if given I, 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 I alpha, uh, then uh, um, the alpha planes defined by this is the same as alpha, the projection of an alpha plane defined this way uh, when uh, one projects it uh, by the projection from G to M. And uh, okay, so uh, <clears throat> this sort of uh, uh, viewpoint will be used later on for us. Now having these uh, two sets of uh, two planes, uh, each parametrized by a, a <coughs> projective parameter, uh, alpha and beta in this case, or the affine parameters for them. We define twister bundles 
n alpha and n beta is S1 bundles of alpha frames and beta frames. And uh, as I said, we can view them as a bundle over G or as a bundle over M. So we're gonna switch and uh, make the distinction clear. It should be clear for us as we uh, continue. Okay, so um, again, I thought it might be helpful for, you know, if somebody wants to get his or her hand dirty with computations to really have a parametrization of the structure group for four dimensional different conformal structures. So it can be parametrized this way for parameters F0, F1, F2, T12, and G12. And the Lie algebra is clear, they also uh, obvious from the uh, structure equations is of this form. But this, knowing this, one can also make an interesting observation is that um, let, uh, given the structure group, let AG denote the one dimensional subgroup of G0 or of the parabolic P1 uh, that is uh, given by G0. So everything else is zero and only take the parameter G1. So this would be a, first of all, can be checked, it's a normal subgroup and it acts on the principal bundle and the Carton connection changes by conjugation because of the covariancy of the Carton connection. And <clears throat> by the action of G1, one can see that the uh, co-frame uh, omega i's go through this chain. And uh, this is ex exactly like the, uh, um, if you put alpha here, we defined exactly I alpha as the kernel of these two one forms. So in other words, one can see that um, starting with M and then uh, acting, by A, acting by G1, G1 can be taken as a parameter for alpha planes. The same way one can do with G2 and it parametrizes beta planes. So this suggests that this S1 bundle, these twister bundles can be viewed as the leaf space of um, these uh, integrable uh, Fafian systems. First of all, they are integrable and their leaf space gives exactly uh, these twister bundles. But one can say, okay, what if we, you know, we, these are projective parameters. We can also use one over alpha and one over beta to parametrize the twister bundles. And this is again, is fine because one can see that now this is the leaf space of if we go, go through what we've done so far, one can see that this can be viewed as the leaf space of uh, these <coughs> Fafian systems. And th th this is basically all makes sense if one realizes that the, these bundles, they are uh, <coughs> projective lines. So the S1 bundle of uh, uh, twister bundles are basically fibers of this Fafian system. And let's say in this uh, point of view, gamma one and gamma two are differentials over them. And uh, if now one works mod uh, modulo this uh, ideal, then one, see that, one sees that th this is uh, uh, what uh, the structure equation gives us mod by uh, this ideal. And this is nothing but a projective structure, one dimensional projective structures on the fibers of the twister bundle. So this is again, a hint that everything is projectively uh, parametrized for us. And the same thing for, uh, these beta, the twister bundle of beta bias. Um, so we just will make a choice and we'll, you know, for instance, we'll identify uh, 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 <coughs> this Fafian system for uh, this uh, sort of, uh, uh, we'll identify N alpha as the leaf space of this Fafian system for what we're going to do later. Moreover, this. Uh, um, these twister bundles, um, they have more structure. Uh, because they are bundle of uh, null two planes, uh, they have a tautological induced rank two distribution. And this is sort of one can do it 
uh, by uh, just direct computation, so we have a, a conformal structure, take a vial connection and compute that um, when going to like a point on this twister bundle. So that point corresponds to the annihilator of these two uh, one forms, the, sorry, the kernel of these two one forms. And then because we have a vial connection, there is a horizontal lift of every two, two plane, in particular, every null two plane. And one can check again, this is working with a vial connection, just any vial connection, we'll see that it will be the same. Then you see that the um, <coughs> vertical one form for the vibration um, alpha to M. So this is four dimensional, this is five dimensional. We need to introduce a how the vial connection gives a unique uh, vertical uh, one form with respect to this vibration. And it's exactly this zeta three. So we define a uh, distribution D as the kernel of these zetas. And one can see that D of zeta one and D of zeta two satisfy this and D of zeta three satisfies this at every point that, you know, this alpha means that this is uh, evaluated at the, at the two plane P that corresponds to the parameter alpha. So this is done by just direct computation if somebody just takes a bar connection. So the, the, the A4, A3, A2, A1, A0 are functions? They are basically the uh, components of the anti-self-dual vial curvature. And here we're taking with a choice of a co-frame. Yes, there are functions on M right now for us. Okay, okay. Yes. And uh, so this is just by taking a, a vial connection. But there's, again, I think a more invariant way of viewing this is that uh, this uh, bundle of null planes, it, we identify it as the <coughs> leaf space of this function system. And again, one can see that um, this, uh, these uh, one form satisfy this, okay? So in particular, they, again, uh, 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 you can see there's an induced two, three, five distribution on this uh, <coughs> leaf space. And uh, um, although one thing I, I didn't mention that this uh, two, three, five, it's this rank two distribution is two, three, five, provided that this quartic is non-zero. We stay away from the vanishing, uh, vanishing set of this quart, uh, quartic. Um, and we're gonna get to this later. This is uh, one of the main points for us. Um, so, and Mac, uh, you know, uh, uh, at most there are four of these for each, uh, at each point of M, there are four points in the fiber at which this uh, quartic vanishes at most. But uh, when viewing it this way, then this is again two, three, five. If A zero is uh, non-zero, we stay away from uh, zero values of A zero. So in other words, alpha zero is not a root for this quartic. Um, but again, the structure group acts transitively on the roots of this uh, quartic. And uh, the condition that we want, would like to stay away from A zero equal to zero is basic, if, if A zero is equal to zero, there's additional co-frame adaptation that we're gonna again, uh, get to uh, like in two slides, I guess. So this is, um, this hints at this distinguished points where this is zero, you know, th these are something that if you wanna rule them out, that means, uh, we, we avoid certain uh, 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 subsets of the principal bundle. And we wanna, if we wanna restrict to them, that means we want a, an additional co-frame adaptation. But viewing it this way, we immediately get back this uh, construction because um, if uh, <clears throat> um, we take a section, um, of the principal bundle, and we act by, you know, this uh, G1. So G1 was correspond to the parameter alpha. 
And we know that the, you know, if we have a section, uh, we restrict, we pull back the Cartan connection using a section and we act by an element in P1, this is the change of the Cartan connection, right? So we can, if we look at this and pick up, the, see what is the transformation that gamma one goes through, it's exactly something of this form where alpha is equal to G1, right? So this, this invariantly gives us this computation that one can do by just taking a choice of wild connection and then checking that it's invariant. It automatically manifests itself by this, uh, by this formula when we change the Cartan connection by an action of the, um, by action of G1. Now, um, <clears throat> um, having a quartic, we said that we would like to avoid, if, if, we, if we avoid the vanishing of the quartic, then we have a two, three, five distribution. So if there's a point, uh, there's a alpha plane at which this quartic vanishes, we call it a principal null plane. So it's where the uh, rank two distribution is not bracket generated. There's, a more, there's another invariant way of saying it that I thought it might be interesting to point out is that um, at basically at each point of um, um, this uh, twister bundle, we can form this quartic, right? So take a section and, I mean, this is defined on the principal bundle. So you can pull it back uh, using a section or you can just view it on the uh, G, the big bundle, principal bundle. And this quartic is kind of interesting and I'm not gonna show this, but I think it's a, it's a nice exercise if somebody wants to get their hands dirty with these things. One can show that this um, quartic, which is uh, cooked up by the uh, anti-self-dual components of the valve curvature is not well-defined on N alpha, but its vanishing set on D is a well-defined, um, gives a well-defined, is a well-defined preserved by the structure. But moreover, if one views it, you know, by taking a section from uh, on, on the, bundle of beta planes, <clears throat> then in fact, it's a well-defined weighted, it's an invariant weighted quartic on the other bundle. The same way you can cook up the self-dual quartic using B I, B's, BIs, and here you just put uh, omega two, and then you get an invariant quartic on an alpha. So this <clears throat> can be checked in many ways by the, we have a parametrization of the structure group that one can check or more efficiently is to just take an infinitesimal generator of the fiber action um, for the fibers of, of principal bundle over this N alpha. So an infinitesimal generator is written this way, right? And these are the, uh, um, so this is uh, an infinitesimal generator of the fiber action and one checks that the um, Lee derivative of this quartic along V uh, satisfies this relation when evaluated at the tautological distribution at a point on the, um, this, the, uh, the twister bundle. So in particular, if, so uh, the alpha is given this way for an we are working at the point that corresponds to parameter alpha on uh, the, the bundle of alpha planes. So if um, you can see that it's, if, it's, if this is zero, then this, uh, um, uh, everything is, this vanishing set is well-defined. In the same way, one can show that if one works, it takes the same quartic and works in N beta, then this is an, an in fact, the weight invariant weighted quartic. So this was just a kind of an interesting observation. Um, and um, so one can see it says that uh, the conformal structure is self-dual if this quartic is vanish, the vanishes everywhere. Equivalently, if all alpha planes are principal, so, uh, or which means that uh, this rank two distribution is integral. 
So note that if this is integrable, that means uh, the twisted bundle N alpha is foliated by null surfaces that are uh, parameterized by this parameter G1. And this other quartic um, W plus, which is again formed by here putting Bi's and omega zero, omega two, uh, replacing omega one by omega two, this gives the curvature of uh, you know what what is known as uh, this this uh, geometry of torsion free path geometries. So this is a weighted quartic on the um, mm, this five dimensional twisted bundle, which has now a torsion free path structure. Okay, now uh, having a notion of uh, <clears throat> um, um, uh, null surfaces and uh, these bundle of null planes, uh, we would like to see what are the necessary conditions that are implied by uh, having a foliation by alpha planes or having a foliation by alpha surfaces. Um, so we are looking for um, an integrable distribution given by this um, um, ideal for some section, uh, alpha zero from M to the bundle of alpha plane. So we wanna see if there is such a section when this ideal Frobenius integral. Okay, so we have it as an algebraic ideal. Let's see what is its uh, differential ideal. Okay, let's take D of it. And then remember that this is the form of the, um, um, Fofian system. Uh, th this is a generator of uh, our Fofian system algebraic generator. And uh, if you want this to be satisfied, that means um, basically, again, using the structure equations, that the differential of alpha zero has to satisfy this. Again, mod modulo our ideal. But this again is, uh, if, if you remember this change of uh, Carton connection by an action of uh, G1, this says that um, this is nothing but uh, sort of a change in gamma one by the action of uh, a G1. So here G, I identify G1 with, with this alpha zero. And if you uh, look at the, uh, so if G1 is equal to alpha zero, then this action changes gamma one to this expression. So having this thing equal, you know, congruent to zero means that you want a change of, you want a, a, a kind of, a, you, you, you would like to have a reduction of the structure bundle and want to put uh, uh, this transformed one form, uh, put it, congruent to zero uh, mod um, the ideal I alpha zero. All right, um, so let's take another differentiation of exactly this newly introduced one form and uh, one more differentiation exactly gives this <coughs> two form has to be zero. Um, that means this section has to be a uh, this section has to be a principal null plane. And doing the same thing for a uh, integrable uh, beta uh, plane distribution, you get these conditions, and that means you would like to have a null a principal null beta plane. So this is really simple, just it's, it's really simple exercise to use the structure equations, take derivative and just compute these things and use, uh, play with which product. All right, let's have now find some sufficient conditions. So the, the um, integrable, the necessary condition basically implied there should be at some point some reduction and uh, the integrable alpha plane has to be a principal uh, null plane. I don't know if there is any question. Please uh, interrupt me if uh, I'm not clear. 
so, uh, maybe I say something and choose my words incorrectly sometimes. So. Uh, perhaps I have a question, Omid. Uh, yeah. So you you're restricting yourself to to real roots, or you consider complex roots? Yeah. No. Well? Right now, I'm I'm considering. Uh, no, no. Right now, for the necessary condition, there was no. I mean, if you want to have complex, you can. You have to. Yeah. Right now, I'm considering uh, avoiding complexification. But you can oh, do okay. the same thing. Is yeah. After complexification. Yeah. Right uh, now, I'm just okay. treating. Uh, only uh, real roots, yes. So I want a foliation by- Oh, oh okay, you want, okay. Okay, thank you. But, but things go through actually. So you just need to be careful and complexify and- um, by, Yeah, yeah, I, I would imagine. Okay, thank ethics. you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now to find some sufficient conditions, let's uh, um, assume that we have a principal alpha plane and assume that it's a double root of the quartic. So um, because we have a um, double root and the structure group acts transitively under roots, we would like to um, use uh, um, the action and translate the uh, root to alpha equal to zero. Right? We can always do that. That means we would like to consider uh, points in the principal bundle at which, because it's a double root, We'd like to find roots so that the first two coefficients of the quartic vanishes at that point. So we can always do that, assuming that there's a double root. That immediately um, reduces the, actually the structure group uh, to the G0 part by one dimension. So they, this can be again viewed as saying, um, you would like the alpha plane, this double root to correspond to this Poffian uh, um, system, omega zero and uh, uh, omega two. And uh, you would like to preserve this two plane, right? So that reduces G zero by one dimension. And you can simply put G one equal to zero in the parametrization of the structure. So this, uh, now we have a reduction of the 15 dimensional bundle to a 14 dimensional principal bundle that we denote by G1. And this is a, not one has to check whether it's a Carton, kind of Carton geometry, but it's in general, it's just an E structure with a, a pseudo connection Psi one, not necessarily equivariantly changing along the Phi one. And this Psi one is again Psi where we've put Omega gamma one equal to zero, the same as uh, psi before. But if we want to find the reduced, because now we are working on a, a 14 dimensional, we would like to have, we have only 14 uh, independent one forms. And so a gamma one is reduced on when, when pulled back to G one. So if you want to find the expression for gamma one, we use these two, uh, someone may call Bianchi identities or someone might call the, um, so yeah, D, the exterior derivative of A1 and A0 on the bundle, principal bundle G. So they are written this way. So if you're, if you're working on G1, then this is zero, this is zero. So these, some, these, are, these are called co-frame derivatives. So they also have to, you know, they're, they're zero because this is also zero. And we are assuming on G1, this is zero, these are zero, these are zero, but we are assuming that it's a double root. So this is non-zero. And this way, we exactly find what is gamma one. It's written this way, we can write it this way, but these are not really any more co-frame derivatives of A1 because A1 now here is zero. They, do, they, they don't have that interpretation anymore. Now we go and check uh, d squared equal to zero. And we find that in fact, gamma one can be written, can you know, uh, uh, express it in terms of uh, quantities that still survive uh, in the structure equation. But in particular, if you mod work modulo these, our modulo our ideal here, then they, they, uh, gamma one is written this way. And this is two components of the cotton tensor. So now, 
having this uh, reduced form of gamma one, let's find we would like this to be would like be this to be integrable. So that means we want d of um, um, omega one and omega two to be zero when we're working mod uh, our idea. But they're not. They're zero if this is these two are zero. Now, let's uh, uh, go back to this cotton tensor of our conformal structure. So if we evaluate, so cotton tensor is a R4 value two form, if we, if we evaluate it at um, the sort of the, 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 the so this, this is exactly the kernel of omega zero and omega two. So I write it this way, this is sort of, a dual to coframes omega one and omega three. I denote it this way: dual to coframe omega one and omega three. So, if we evaluate cotton tensor at these uh, at these two at these planes, these are the four components of the cotton tensor. And the vanishing of these two components is well defined when we work on G one. And the other two. We can always find a two-dimensional reduction of G1 such that these, these two are zero. These are basically, they can be always put set equal to zero. So now we can formulate uh, this conformal version of Goldberg's X. It says if you're working with a you know section of some principal alpha plane, then any of uh, two of the following conditions imply the third. So if uh, this principal null, uh, null plane is a repeated root of the quartic, if the cotton York tensor degenerate at this principal null plane, or um, and the third one is when the null plane is integral. So, so far we showed assuming one, if we assume this, then two and three are equivalent because um, we just said that if these two vanishes, then we saw that the um, d omega, d, these are zero mod by the ideal and, um, uh, and vice versa. So this, this, was, this is shown. Let us see when um, two and three imply first condition. So this is by contradiction. Assume that you're working with a uh, not a repeated, but of multiplicity one root. So again, reduce, okay? Uh, translate that root to zero. And um, <clears throat> impose the integrability, right? Um, so the integrability implies that the reduced gamma one has to be zero modulo the ideal uh, omega zero and omega two, okay? And furthermore, uh, we would like to assume that the cotton tensor vanishes when evaluated at the two point exactly like here. This cotton tensor, we would like it to vanish these components of the cotton tensor. So this can always be done. That immediately, that, that always uh, can be done and it uh, gives a reduction, a four dimensional reduction of the principal bundle. And we basically get rid of all size, all G plus in the Cartan connection. And um, now this in principle gives us a vile structure from the conformal geometry we were working with. And uh, one can go after finding the Ricci tensor of the vile structure. In particular, um, the Ricci may not be, uh, because it's a vile structure, it has a symmetric part and an skew-symmetric part. In particular, the skew-symmetric part, this component, is given by this A1 that we assume is non-zero. If it's zero, then we have a multiplicity two root. But you know, we are in the statement of the theorem, we were assuming that we're working with a, so if we, so the cognitive tensor degenerates for some metric. So we want it to arise from a metric, right? We don't want a vial structure. And that means, so if you want, you know, the integrability of a metric in the conformal uh, 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 geometry, then that means a contradiction because this uh, skew symmetric one part of the Ricci has to be zero. So this sort of um, hints at something that we missed in the previous step, meaning that 
if you assume that you have a repeated root and integrable, one has to show that this reduction of the cotton tensor, uh, the degeneracy of the cotton tensor is also goes through assuming that uh, the skew part of the Ricci vanishes. But again, this doesn't uh, impose any new obstruction. This can always be done. There is a um, book of uh, Achilles and Goldberg on conformal differential geometry in which they are saying that um, having a repeated root of the quartic implies uh, integrability, but they only check the necessary conditions. They don't go through this. And this absolutely need not be the case because the cutting tensors are the obstructions. And the same sort of argument is repeated in Grossman's article. So I, I mean, that's, I don't think it's true. And another interesting um, um, problem to consider is what are the uh, um, integrable uh, conformal structures with, you know, with um, non-repeated roots. So if there's a, um, um, an integrable conformal structure of Petrov type one, or if there's an integrable um, alpha plane that is not a repeated root of the quartic. So again, in the book of Achilles and Goldberg, they say recurrent conformal structures of type one give such examples. And they go on to you know, uh, study some really exotic structures of webs of uh, two uh, surfaces. But again, I checked, uh, but I'm not so, so, so certain about it, but I checked and it seems like in this case, uh, uh, you know, being recurrent implies that the Petrov type cannot be generic. So this is similar also in, I think, Laurentian signature, there is an article by McLennan and Leroy that say the same thing. And I think it, it's the same for uh, indefinite signature. So this is still, I think, an interesting, just a curious thing to, <coughs> to know. Okay, so Excuse I have, me, uh, Omid. Uh, yeah. What do you mean by recurrent conformal structure? Oh, yeah, it's it means that um, um, so uh, it means that the um, the um, well co-frame derivatives of the vial tensor is uh, um, proportional to itself. So you can write. Um, mm, uh, oh, okay, I think I see. It, yeah, I, yeah, J, yeah. K, L, M, and K is equal to uh, some one form, so D of this, take the uh, omega, uh, you know, uh, let's say taking a section of the structure bundle. So there's a one form alpha K such that this, um, mm, but don't worry. I mean, it's just yeah. uh, recurrent. Okay. I mean, the vial tensor yes. is recurrent. Exactly. Yeah. The vial oh, tensor okay. is recurrent. Yeah. Okay. Thank I, you. I don't know what happened. I cannot erase. Hmm. All right. All right. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So let's, uh, if there's, there are no questions, I will just, um, I think we can quickly also review the, what happens in dimension three and, um, because there's something interesting that happens here and then we can, um, we'll leave it until next lecture. So again, in dimension three, um, conformal structures, uh, there are Cartan geometries of this type with the uh, Cartan connection, they can't be written this way. And so two, three valued uh, connection form with this, with respect to this inner product on R5. And uh, again, like before here, uh, there's an invariant quartic that when you pull back uh, using a section, it gives you the metric on M. And uh, Carton curvature in this case is R3 value two form and given by a cotton York tensor. These are now properly tensors. And um, uh, it has five components or five entries, um, A0 A to A4. Um, and um, I'll just, here I have written the, if somebody wants to play around with these things, the a parameterization of the structure group. And this is the um, the algebra of the structure group. Um, 
So let's just, you know, uh, find, uh, as, as before, find necessary conditions to have uh, a foliation by null surfaces. Um, so a, um, no, a two plane is null if the annihilator of that two plane as a one form in the uh, cotangent bundle is null with respect to the um, induced metric on the cotangent bundle. So this way we just need to uh, parameterize, uh, parameterize uh, null uh, one forms, which can be in, in this uh, case can be written this way for some projective parameter alpha. So if let's say there is a um, null plane that is integrable, let us uh, find the differential ideal of uh, basically this um, as before. So that means um, the exterior derivative of it has to be zero mod this ideal. And uh, that means if you again use the structure equations, this um, one form has to be zero, not the ideal, for some uh, sort of quantity x3. But again, um, th this is very simple computation using the structure uh, equations. But again, this is as before, nothing but the transformation in gamma one, the connection from gamma one, when we change uh, the gauge, uh, when we act by the um, um, fibers of the principal bundle, using a subgroup, a two dimensional normal subgroup parameterized by G1 and X3. So X3 is the group parameter that corresponds to Xi3. So this is in the, this is in the prolongation of CO21. And this G1 corresponds to the one form um, gamma one, more cotonian gamma. Yeah, so this is what's written here. So we have these two one forms. Uh, this is in the nilpotent part of the parabolic and this is in uh, G1, G, uh, sorry, G0. Again, we differentiate twice more and uh, we have to have these two differential uh, congruent to zero mod our ideal. So this is a one form and this is a two form. So again, the first one is nothing but a change of Xi3 when we act by this uh, two dimensional normal subgroup. And this now is a quartic uh, in terms of the components of the cotton tensor, right? So that, that means the basically the um, null plane has to be principle with respect to the cotton tensor, quartic that is defined using the cotton tensor. So now we define a five dimensional uh, leaf space uh, of uh, this integrable um, Fafian system and it's two dimensional fibers over M are again normal subgroup of P1 parameterized by G1 and um, X3. Again, the parameter G1 is the same as can be identified with alpha that parameterizes null plane. And um, so on the twister bundle, just as before, now we can have an adapted co-frame. So the adapted co-frame is given by A down two, A down three, and uh, this, the, the null, uh, the, this one form, which basically corresponds to uh, parameterizes null one forms and these two additional one forms we found previously in our computation, but I'm not gonna write down. Then one can see that uh, this rank two distribution on this uh, twister bundle satisfies these conditions. So if one stays away from roots of this quartic, the distribution D is again, bracket generating with growth factor two, three, four, five, and it defines a fourth order ODE. Um, so 
this can be seen again from the structure equation purely. And, um, but anyway, I'm not gonna do that. Um, so we call a null plane principle if it's a root of this cortic or alternatively is the uh, rank two distribution is not bracket generating. And if all null planes are principal, uh, then um, the conformal flick is flat. Now, um, okay. Sorry, Omi, can we just go back to one, one yeah. slide? So, I mean, do you, uh, you said fourth order OD, but do you, do you have a splitting on that D? Uh, yes, I, the, the, um, yes. So it was, um, yeah, I have actually, this is something I, so I would like to study this. Um, um, there is a, um, there is a distinguished, uh, distinguished direction in, in this, uh, um, on, uh, on the, is there split? I think, yes, there was a splitting. Yes. There's, I have to check. Because you need that splitting to, to yeah, for, yeah, yeah, to associate a fourth order with this, right? Yes, yes. Um, I think it's, hmm. no, I'm not sure. Maybe it's, I, ha I have to look. It's just, uh, I, I didn't have, okay. because I yeah, wanted sure. to analyze this more, but um, I maybe I made a mistake that it's. But are you, are you saying that like the, the symbol associated to that is the, is the yes. symbol for a uh, yes, fourth yes, order? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. But I'm not sure okay. if uh, if the splitting. I just need to check. Just a simple check-in. Okay. Anyway. Okay. Thanks. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So if we now want a um, um, find some sufficient conditions for uh, integrally null planes. Um, then uh, by, by null surfaces. Let us assume that uh, the quartic has a repeated root of multiplicity three or four. And then as before, we um, consider the uh, um, co-rank, co-dimension co one sub-bundle of the principle, 10 dimensional principle bundle at which the, let's say in dimension three, uh, in uh, Petrov type three, A zero, a1 and A2 are zero. Then uh, this gives again, like before, a one-dimensional reduction. And uh, um, again, using D of, uh, because we're setting A0, A1, and A2 equal to zero. So looking at the exterior derivative of A2, we can actually find the reduced form of gamma one, which is always of this form. And again, this is the covariant derivative of A3 and A4 um, along, um, this is omega two and this is omega three. And um, so modulo, then immediately if you have uh, type three and type N, modulo the ideal generated by omega one, one can check that um, this is integrable, in fact, the null plane is integrable. And moreover, the um, gamma one can also be uh, you know, congruent to zero uh, mod the um, mod omega one because, there, because of this relation, because uh, of D of this quantity is of this form. So this is equal to zero. We can set it equal to zero by reducing psi three. And this is exactly uh, sort of uh, agrees with what we were doing in finding necessary conditions in the previous slide. And similarly for type N, we can do this. And basically we have uh, just with almost no effort, we get that um, um, repeated principal null planes in 3D conformal structures of type three and E always integrable. And we can easily find how, you know, how abundant they are locally. They're given by three and two functions of two variables respectively. So th there is no something like you know checking like some obstruction. As soon as you know there's a repeated root of type three or four, then it's integrable as a conformal structure. But for type two and D, there is an obstruction. There's a scalar that has to vanish, and I haven't really managed to you know uh, express that scalar invariantly. But um, 
one can set it equal to zero and again find the generality and see, you know, there's, it's quite abundant. But what is interesting is in type D, one obtains actually a uh, finitely many um, uh, of such, I mean, the local moduli space of such conformal structures is, depends only on three parameters. So uh, this is what are the last thing I want to talk about probably for five minutes. Um, so to, because I, I would like to analyze uh, this case when there are two roots of distinct roots of multiplicity two. So I can um, <coughs> translate one of them to zero and one of them to infinity. That means that exactly means I would like to consider a rank, a, a co-dimension two subbundle in G such that a zero is equal to a one equal to zero and a th um, three is equal to a four is equal to zero, right? This uh, reduces like before gamma one uh, is congruent to zero because of this relation and theta one is congruent to zero because of this. And um, so there's a two dimensional reduction as before, I'm not going to do it again. Uh, very similar. And uh, after two prolongations of, you know, after this reduction and prolonging, one gets a closed system, right? So we have, uh, we have a principal bundle of dimension um, eight and uh, the structure equations, uh, they depend, they only involve eight scale, scalar functions. Um, and, uh, this is a closed system. So assuming genericity that you, know, uh, you stay away from some uh, singular um, um, <coughs> loci, then one can reduce further and you know, reduce, get rid of all the structure uh, group, all P1, and basically get a distinguished uh, co-framing on M satisfying these relations for two functions Z1 and Z2 and Z1 and Z2, they satisfy these relations, right? Um, so again, the reduction goes exactly like what I described previously for uh, when we were uh, reducing in dimension four. So these things have uh, two dimensional symmetry. This can again be done if one is interested to do this kind of thing by requiring that finding, you know, the, for when, the, for what vectors the lead derivative of omega i is equal to zero, one can find that such vector fields are of, have to be of this form for some functions of v1 and v2, which satisfy this relation, and then sort of work with um, uh, this relations to get some nice coordinates for these uh, two-dimensional surfaces that uh, foliate the three manifold. But I would like to end this lecture by just showing how having these relations sort of uh, shows that these structures depends on three constants, which, in, which is again an application of Frobenius theorem. So we have a closed system, three one forms and three uh, scalars, scalar functions. So to do this, just form the product of M with R3, where um, R3 is parametrized by Z1 to Z3. And on this six dimensional space, uh, define these one forms this way. So these are uh, linearly uh, independent. And uh, one can check that if this, you know, consider this ideal. And because of the structure equations for omegas, one can show that this, you know, immediately check that this. Um, uh, Fafian system is, this Fafian system is Frobenius. So what does that mean? That means there is a local coordinate such that this Fafian system can be written like this for um, uh, three coordinates x1 to x3 and for each value of x1, x2 and x3, basically we get a, uh, this corresponds to a uh, three-dimensional uh, conformal structure on uh, M given by omega one, omega two, and omega three. Um, so these are the references that I used um, uh, and in, in, 
using these references, you can find more references in history. So the first is a um, paper on a four-dimensional um, Goldberg's Axe theorem. The second one is Goldberg's Axe theorem in dimension three, but um, again, uh, assuming that there's a, you know, the integrability arises from a metric. And uh, the third um, reference is a book that I basically, I learned uh, using which I learned this approach, finding this necessary condition for uh, um, examining integrability, but unfortunately it has some mistakes uh, is the book of Achilles and Goldberg. And I think I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for me? Uh, yes, but perhaps. Uh, so, so with my paper with Pavel, uh, as you said, we worked in this uh, metric setting. So maybe I can switch on the video. Uh, oops. And um, so in, in your version of the goldberg sachs theorem in dimension three, it's in a conformal setting. Because if I remember correctly, we had uh, breaking of the conformal invariance. But in your version, you, you're working in a conformal setting. Um, yeah, so, so so maybe I didn't uh, understand what the statement was. In, oh, statement in was your... that you know that if you have a um, uh, you know that this quartic that you form using the cotton York tensor, if it has a, a repeated root of multiplicity three or four, then it's always integral. So okay. you don't need like oh, uh, so it, it's the um. Okay, it's so it's it, it's sufficient. Okay, it's uh, I see, I see. Okay, because yeah, we 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 had uh, something about necessary. Okay, necessary is quite uh, straightforward, but yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. So okay. this is uh, the the strange thing about it is that there's no need for cotton tensor if you're type three and n, and mm -hmm. you just get integrability uh, right away. And I, I'm not sure if this, let's say. Um, this conformal structures of type D, this uh, three parameter family of them, if this is known or um, there they have some significance, okay. um, I'm not sure. So. Okay, so, so yeah, maybe it's surprising that you have to distinguish between these uh, various types. I mean, type two, type three. Yeah, I D, couldn't. Three, yeah, I couldn't and... find. Uh, right, I couldn't find. Uh, an invariant description of this scalar that prevents integrability um, in type two and type, but as, yeah, if you have a repeated root of you know multiplicity two, mm. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions for me? If not, let's thank for me again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.